So you and I have this oddball fantasy. And that fantasy, no, it's not a 911 GT3, it's not Ferraris. Rather, it's a station wagon, a state in other parts of the world, but specifically something that's brown, something that has a diesel engine, something with a manual transmission and ideally velour seats. The bad news is I can't offer you that today, but what I can offer you is a station wagon, not 600 horsepower, but wait for it, won't cost $150,000. Yes, I'll get it right out there. I am excited for a station wagon, but let's get the legalese out of the way. Come over here and you will see where things started. This is a Toyota Crown hatchback. One could call this a sort of an SUV. One could call this a tall Avalon. Either way, that's where the station wagon comes from. So it's the same wheelbase, the 112 inch wheelbase, but what they've done is they've grafted on a station wagon back. And can I say, arigato gozaimasu for the design restraint. You would look at this and one would think, oh my God, we need to make this look like a Subaru. I don't want a Subaru. I want something that isn't expensive like an AMG. Granted, I'd like 600 horsepower, I'm not gonna get everything. But notice here, there's no body cladding. Now, may I call your attention to the wheels, another example of restrained design themes. This is a 21-inch wheel, which tells us one thing. This is the fancy version of the two different flavors on offer, like the Crown, I guess, sedan. Uh, it's on offer as an XLE and a Limited. The Limited is the one that's fitted with the 21-inch wheels. The XLE is fitted with the 19-inch wheels. Then you look at the front of the vehicle, and this is where the revised, I want to say, Toyota design theme is going. They call that the hammerhead. I kind of see where they're going with the hammerhead, but here's what's interesting to me about this whole design. Here, from the A-pillar backwards, you have traditional design, but notice, dare I say, sensual, like Francisco, punch in on this. This whole hip here, believe it or not, something that's not an RS6 has a hip. There are haunches back here. So they've made it more sensual because they don't have creases like other versions of the Toyota design theme. But then you get up here and you do notice the creases in the hammerhead here. Like notice the light signatures here, as well as the crease running all the way up the hood. This is where it's a bit more, I wanna say aggressive. Now you look at this, you see a little bit of Aston Martin, you see a little bit of like BMW, AMG with some of the creases down here, kind of like we saw in the Camry a couple of days ago. Now, as with anything in life, all is not well in Camelot. There is a bit of Subaru Outback design theme creeping into the details here. I don't love it, but I'm not offended by it. You also see some details where the bodywork, it bows out from the B pillar. This is kind of a sexy European touch. I can't believe I'm, I'm being so pornographic describing a Toyota, but that's what station wagons bring out in me. Uh, then, of course, you're probably thinking, what powers it? They're not really a surprise. This is the same 2.5 four-cylinder we've seen in other Toyotas. So that, um, did I say it's not an RS6? So 243 horsepower, and for the avoidance of doubt, this is not like Mike Swear's mousetrap of that single motor hybrid, so it's not a mild hybrid. It is a full parallel hybrid, the Toyota Synergy Drive, and this engine drives the front wheels. However, what you are looking at is only on offer as all-wheel drive. And the way the whole all-wheel drive system works is similar to the Venza we've seen in other Toyotas. Then the engineers fit an electric motor at the rear so there is no drive shaft physically connecting the gas engine in the front, the 2.5, with the rear wheels. The electric motor drives the rear wheels, hence all-wheel drive. Now, there is a benefit for this solution. This is a large vehicle. Uh, I would say this is about the size of an Avalon, obviously a little bit taller and probably going to be heavier, but still the manufacturer calls it for 36 combined MPG. Inside, not much of a surprise because they lifted the interior from the sedan. 
Did you expect anything different? But that is not saying a bad thing because the design worked in the sedan. I would argue here it works very well with this, I don't want to say cognac, but it's like a saddle brown leather interior. They do offer the soft text in the basic model. This being limited, you do get the leather. But overall, still retains the toggle switches, the larger screens like 12.3 here, you got LCD here. But really, this part, not what this is about. Okay, so my attempt at being practical. First off, this, where a six-footer would have the seat, more than enough room back here, even with the wheelbase that we talked about that comes from the crown. But more importantly, it's about the business end back there, and we kind of have to start over here to understand what they've done. The overall storage from the rear to the backs of the front seats, that's six and a half feet but they've decided to extend it and make it more practical, meaning flat, where they've put this in to cover the footwells. So, I don't know, are you gonna really gonna put two by fours in here? You would put skis in here? I don't know, maybe folks would put a blow up mattress. I'm not that kind of a guy, but overall, very unique packaging touch. And now the piece de resistance, otherwise known as the business end of a station wagon. This is the storage area. Uh, it can be extended by using these releases here, as well as on the tops of the seat backs, and one can demonstrate the six and a half foot cargo. Uh, there is some storage back here as well, not that much, but overall, this is why a vehicle like this is important. It's not a big SUV, it's more maneuverable around town, and we still have to drive it, we'll do that probably sometime in April, but in reality, this is as usable as an SUV without all the bulk. Then, from a design perspective in the rear, this is probably the most tame part of the design. Now, an interesting and rather important point about the light signature, this is the design theme that ties it to a family of crowns, which, this is where we get to the challenging point, not that many here in the U.S. They haven't been in the U.S. for a while. It's really a brand, a whole sub-brand in Japan in their domestic market, and there are a number of different crowns on offer there. So this is kind of my way of saying, how about more of the unique crowns coming here, like the station wagon or crazy minivans, or really the limousine is what we want. Now, this is where we get to the wish list, because overall, I don't have much to ask for because we've gotten a station wagon. Yeah, we could say brown and diesel and manual. That's never going to happen. So how about we do this? GR. Now, don't laugh at me. Follow me along here. GR Crown Signia Station Wagon. But this is what I'm asking for. You can keep this engine if you want. Maybe swap it out for a different, maybe 2.4 turbo, which already exists, so I'm not really adding to a lot to the production cost of the vehicle. Then tune the rear electric motor to be rear wheel drive biased, and then change the suspension. Now there are adjustable dampers already, but change the tuning of the suspension to make it more like a car, so it doesn't have as much ground clearance because it would be a road car. And there, you would have a budget RS6. Try to tell me that wouldn't be cool. But I'm one man, and this is the point of the episode that I turn around to you guys to opine in the comments below, or via our social media, Motoman TV on Word, Motoman TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, if you uh, enjoyed or got value out of this episode, uh, I would appreciate you clicking subscribe, like, sharing these episodes, because the algorithm is a bitch, and you can watch the recent premiere video, which I shot literally 20 minutes before this. I got an hour to shoot both of these. So you're welcome. So you see you in the next episode. Bis später.